Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Reich playing as the German East Asian nation which appears to have probably an old focus tree but we're here regardless. Now if you don't want to hear me read about Pearl of the Orient and its subsequent event, skip ahead about probably about three minutes. Ever since the Burj collapse in 1926, the Kazala Shamorin has been the undisputed master of the Eastern Seas and the guardian of the Western Order in the Orient. The retreat of the British China Station to Australasia left Turk Asian colonies and concessions of vulnerable to native social insurrection. And a native protection only Germany could offer, completing a string of colonies and concessions from, say, London to Tsingtao. This glorious achievement came at a cost, though. Our expansion in the East was unusual in its rapidity and scale, bringing our jurisdiction over a diverse and complicated series of colonies divorced from the metropole. Forced to acknowledge their superiority and yet all too Byzantine to reconstruct or totally reorder, lest they collapse and bring our administration with them. Thus, German East Asia exists not only as a colony, or even as formally as an authority, but instead as a jurisdiction, a stretch of territory in which the the relatively impartial admiralty must at once balance local interests, contend with varying or varying colonial systems, and ensure the protection of it all. Despite our dominance, Japan remains a threat, determined as ever to push us down out of the east and claim it for herself. Our British soldiers starting theirs down over the legation cities, and our glorious battleships vigilant across the seas. Looking past matters of internal difficulty, there may yet be a reckoning, and it is the admiralty's duty to ensure when that time comes, it is ready. Sorry, good. China AOG. Also, if you don't know about status of admiralty, please go ahead. Um, the following is Chinese possessions. Also, under our jurisdiction, and as per the terms of American mediated Shanghai Conference of 1928, Germany's rights in China are equal to those of any other foreign power. The city of Tsingtao has long served as a nexus of our operations there, at once a modern city, a thriving port, and the center of an extensive commercial web woven throughout the East. Not everything passing through Kalochow Bay is fully legitimate, though. The Aufsichtsrat der Ostasian General Verwaltung, or Super Supervisory Board of the East Asian General Administration, manages numerous ships, factories, and even informal concessions which violate the spirit of another letter of the 1928 agreement. The Nanjing warlord's son, Chuan Feng, in a bid to ensure his autonomy from China's central government, accepted a series of exploitative arms deals in return for extensive economic concessions within the League of Eight Provinces, although unrecognized by Beijing. As well as the rest of the international community, the AOG spread its influence throughout the League and even deeper into the country's interior. Ultimately, Berlin would like us to see China as a buffer of sorts against Japan. Every soldier spent there is one less or one who cannot be deployed against us in Malaya and into China to do that end. China's government and the LEP must be supported, and Japanese encroachment in China must be considered only one step away from the Singapore. Set a good. Develop Tsingtao. Nothing says development like getting just a building slot. Yeah, that's gonna suck, not gonna lie. But they, they could be worse, I guess. They're not that too long to make. Obviously, we're gonna figure out which way we're gonna go here. The Grand Fleet would not be bad. Uh, Singapore Flying Corps, air base stuff, so yeah. Uh, I'll as the enforce. The Ost Asian Force is currently or Ost Ost Asian Force. It's currently a divided mix between Ost Asian Marines, local garrison units, and fresh recruits from Berlin. We must take stock on our approach. Do we venture towards more or dedicated Marine Force or do we try something more unorthodox? Because like I said earlier, we have, or hovered over earlier, we have a colonial question. Hurts us. Alfred the Ost Asian Geneva Valtung and observer rights and location councils. If you don't know about that, please go right ahead. We do reserve a voice in Shanghai. Uh, request arms from Berlin is exist and fully independent. AOG influence in China grows. Amidst a season of mixed news, it appears our partners in AOG have managed to come across a stroke of good fortune. The completion and purchase of the Zagan Railway, a large-scale rail project inside the League of Eight Provinces, has allowed the AOG to spread its influence deeper into Chinese territory. While some members' responses to the AOG's actions have been less than pleasant, we can safely assume that this is a sign of good things to come. Good here. We're going to need a lot of this stuff here. Aviation school. Deviating from the orthodox doctrine of Kazla Shemin. To the delight of the German East Asian Admiralty, command of the seas, the fleet being, returning to the Orthodox doctrine of the Kaiserlichen Marine, to the annoyance of the German East Asian Admiralty. Maybe you school sounds like fun. Um, request modern artillery. It's not bad. Honestly, I know what's going to happen, so let's go with request arms from Berlin. We still lack responsible, mil reasonable military industrial facilities. Oh, look at that. Leaving us reliant on Berlin for supplies. Until we have the opportunity to establish a domestic supply, we should request additional rifles from Homeland. Black Monday. Uh, the situation in Germany grows dire. After a devastating financial crisis, the situation or the German economy is in tatters, and the colonies are sure to follow. We must cut back on much of our spending and immediately look for ways to buttress East Asia's already weakened economy. Recovery could take years. Disastrous. Oh crap, that's not good. That is really not good. Um, it's not bad, actually. Oh, oh no, we're down to 13. Oh, what? Oh, come on. We wasted all that time. Do we at least get political power? Crap. Oh, my bad. Well, now I know what we're going to do. Um, we could go with uh, fiscal austerity. Maybe we will someday, but uh, someone did request me to do this path, 
and go with maybe an unorthodox route, I think. So we're going to go ahead and uh, collaborate with local elites, because we can. Our internal governance of both Byzantine and Archaic, due to the inheritance of both French and British colonial systems, in addition to our directly administered territories, we've decided facili to facilitate closer collaboration with local elites to try to improve the situation. Black money hits the AOG. Our Chinese burns of whether the black money crisis is no better than us, it would seem, with German businesses already pre facing pressure from local elements <clears throat> being hit particularly hard. The Deutsche Asiatische Bank once thought too big to fail, teetering on the edge of collapse, and the trickle back effects of this financial stability are being felt by our own financial sector. You too, huh? German businesses flee the league. <clears throat> Let's well, understand the League of Eight Provinces into the Civil War, German confidence of the status quo in China and Germany's collapse. While Qi Zixuan has guaranteed his support for the German interests upon his victory, belief in the continued survival of the AOG and its valuable concession seas is rapidly plummeting. Have some faith, darn it. The end of Black Week. <clears throat> a week has passed since the initial Berlin stock market crash. Rubber and tin, our main export commodities, have already lost more than half of their pre Black Monday value due to the collapse of tire demand from the automotive industry. Meanwhile, rice exports to the European market have ground to a halt, leaving tens of thousands of tons rotting in the fields and on the docks. Europeans in Singapore, Saigon, and other cities with few savings and no land ownership gambled and lost everything in the market, and now find themselves a little better off than their energy in these neighbors. Something must be done. <clears throat> I'm not clicking on that. Holy crap. Emperor Baidao returns into China. Baidao, the monarch of Annam, has recently finished his studies in Germany and returned to Inner China. While he would not be satisfied with his mere ceremonious rule, a carefully controlled monarchy would allow us to mitigate rural instability and win over the support of the people. Since Annamese peasants are innately attached to the emperor, however, the European settlers in Saigon staunchly oppose any attempts to share power with the Annamese. Well, we welcome our puppet emperor and support our Chinese friends. For many years, we've greatly profited from the situation in China. Though we have worked with the Qing, most German deals were done through their more perceptive southern counterpart, Sun Chuanfang's League of Eight Provinces. However, <coughs> The situation in the League is clearly unstable, and to make matters worse, Sun himself has been shot. Thankfully, his replacement in the Nanjing, Qi Jian, has likely become even more lanus than Sun was. The Admiralty is recommending that we send him equipment immediately to prop him up while it submits what appears to be rapidly worsening crossing in eastern China. Send him guns? Here, you can have him. Um, we can try to send volunteers, but it doesn't mean we'll do very well. We can actually send four volunteers. That's actually really good. Uh, Marines might be okay. We have a lot of normal infantry, there, which are 18 combo with, though, which is probably honestly better. So let's go with what are you guys. You guys are 12. Let's send you two. Let's have it used well. Rommel? Sure, why not? Well, let's see what we can do. Can we do planes? Or to get rid of them already. And a black week. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like that at all. Um, naval bombers, tactical bombers, fighters. Send six, because you can. Not going to be able to do very much, but whatever. Well, here, not really. Some more troops of them. Lose a thousand manpower. Uh, American influence has got quite a bit there. Oh, crap, no. Ah, you guys are up here. Okay. Well, then. We'll see what we can do. Hey, Mosley, nice. Mm. You can't really promote anybody, which does kind of suck, but whatever. Uh, Japanese uh, falling prices. The prices of rice and rubber are rapidly falling across colonies. The prices or pricers, us. Uh, oh God. Farmers and plantation owners relying on rice and rubber exports have been hit hard, especially in our two major colonies of Indochina and Malaya. It's possible to control the price of one colony, but our resources are limited, and this will certainly only certainly almost come as a cost at the other, not a business. Uh. Well, you know what? Protect Malay, I guess. Construction speed goes down. No, it's not a business. Anti-concessions attack German assets. <laughs> With the former League of Eight Provinces in complete flames, the German presence in China is rapidly deteriorating. The AOG Nanqing, or Nanking Commission is struggling to make sense out of the chaos as they are forced to retreat to the headquarters. To make things worse, we received reports in Guangzhou that rioters attacked the German quarters there, damaging assets and assaulting a German citizen. In response, the Admiralty is preparing to retaliate by sending a qua squadron of destroyers to attack Guizhou and remind the Chinese that the German Empire will not tolerate such a blatant violation of international treaties, of course. There's no real strategic or tactical value to such an attack on a defensive city, but send a message and ensure that the Chinese people and the rest of the world do not forget the Germans are world power. 
Japanese garrisons Tianjin. If you remember that, please go ahead. Squadron returns. I'm engaging your bin of gunboat diplomacy in Guangzhou. The squadron has returned safely after a successful mission. The Chinese surely not forget this one until the Nanking non Commission can sort their mess in China. Mission accomplished. Good job, guys. Um, I want to make an encirclement here and destroy some of these divisions. Boom, boom, boom. Might be okay. Or we go boom, boom. That might actually be better. Go in there immediately. First International Congress. Not bad. And then boom. Go there and circle that division. Maybe. Maybe not. Hopefully. Uh, there's radio. That one too. Collaborate with local elites. Buy down situation. Uh, the Malaya situation. Uh, send aid to the Nanjing warlords. While direct influence of China is combined with the concessions, Germany's soft power is directly challenged through the Nanjing clique, and a threat to the continued dominance of the southern China is a long-term th uh, threat to us. And stability in China. Crap. Since our expeditionary army destroyed Ho Chi Minh and syndical agitators in Guangzhou ten years ago, Indochina has enjoyed a period of relative stability. But with the recent Berlin stock market crash, or Black Monday has also had a devastating impact on the highly commercialized Indochinese economy. Strikes and rice riots... Rice riots are spreading in Tonkin, Annam, and Dakota, China. Urban students and intellectuals ask for more freedom. What's worse, our intelligence suggests some underground revolutionaries are secretly spreading their influence. The colony is notorious for insubordination and European privileges. With the economic shock of Black Monday, many European settlers have lost everything and become impoverished overnight. Now, some have petitioned us to strengthen their social and commercial privileges so that as settlers, they will not be reduced to living like mere colonial subjects. They argue that a strict racial caste system is the only way to ensure the, uh, peace in the colonies. Well, as fun as that is, I'm going to reject them. Come over here. See what we're gonna do. So you want famine. Can you guys actually win there, maybe? No what? Resume Sano Japanese cooperation. 70 day focus. Let's do the Malay situation. Sultan of Johora was and still a key figure in the Malayan Sultanates, accepting to rule so easily. He now asked for further concession to the right uh, to right the wrongs of the previous British administration, and we agree that these can be amended. As we get some more XP, that's good. Oh, nice. Gotta make sure these guys live, man. Um, I just want to do something like that. Maybe we'll see. <clears throat> but this spares a lot of divisions. On uh, nationalist agitation in Tonkin. I've uncovered a series of nationalist and anti colonialist movements in Tonkin, and every corner of Hanoi agitators are uh, dis disseminating pamphlets calling for national unity and independence. The ringleader behind the agitations is a group called Vietnamese Nationalist Party, and our agents have discovered an insidious plan these bands are infiltrating a garrison in Tonkin. We gotta prepare. Go straight on in if you can. Ta da! There you go. Nice. Supplies are pretty god awful. Plantation strikes. The price of rubber keeps failing and falling. Many plantation owners have decided to fire workers and keep the rest working full time. These decisions have triggered large scale strikes in plantations in Indochina and Malaya. Workers are demanding employers stop firing employees and call for shorter working hours due to better conditions. Since most plantation workers are illiterate, it's suspected that socialist agitators are also behind the coordination. Try to negotiate with them. Yeah, try that. Hmm. We could probably try that and go there too. See what you can come up with. And the Bao Dai solution. Uh, when we took possession of the French territories after the Valkyrie, it was decided that Emperor Bao Dai uh, would remain in his position as Emperor of Annam under our guiding hand. Now he requests a series of reforms to re revitalize the ancient imperial system. You know. We shall see if we can we can grant him these. If we take this top before these guys die, that'd be great. No guarantees though. Hmm. 
Yen Bai Mutiny. Today, some Tonkinese garrisons in Yen Bai military posts near the Sino Indo Chinese border organized a mutiny against the colonial officials. Along with them are armed infiltrators at VNQDD. Thanks to our agents, we have sabotaged our plan to launch a coordinated uprising. We have fended off the rebels and began a large scale crackdown on Tonkin. Now, the desperate rebels are fleeing to the mountainous areas in the Sino Vietnamese border. Concentrated forces, declare martial law. Concentrate and crush. Hmm. Let's go to the south. So it's just victory in Russia. Look at that. Strengthen our ties. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, Grand Admiral von Mucke, uh, Mucke himself will conduct the important talks with our local partners. His stated approach of charm and champagne might not work well as, as he hopes, but we will do our best to support the meetings. Baudaz reforms the first steps. Having centered the throne, Baudaz recruited several four minded bureaucrats or figures into his court, including neo traditional spiritual Pham Kuyen and Catholic administrator Ning Ngo Ding Diem. Now, his ministers have decided to initiate an administrative reform to revitalize the dysfunctional bureaucratic system. Currently, the Mandarins and the protector of Anam only normally run the country while the European advisors hold true power. Baudaz reform will certainly damage European monopolization power. Is necessary? No. And civilian coke in China. Where the forces occupied suppressing the nationalists in Tonkin, the situation in the south and Kong of China is growing increasingly unstable. Strikes have decreased, but trade union activities or activists are reported to be holding frequent meetings, and rumors are spreading that agitators to disguise as monks and merchants are organizing peasants in a secret societies in Kokin China and southern Anam. Additional intelligence suggests many Vietnamese exiles are illegally crossing the border entering Indo China. They're likely to be sent by foreign powers engaged in subsurface activities. I sense calm before the storm. Oh boy. Well, it certainly does look better right now. Keep destroying divisions if possible. Nice. Help him out, help him out. Now it's still fort there, but no godless communists here, man. <clears throat> nice. Nanping, yeah, they can't have that. Longyan. Jailbreak at Polo Corn uh, Condor. This morning our central prisoner in Polo Condor, uh or island reported a mass jailbreak. It's clearly a well organized action, the prisoner escaped through a tunnel. Uh, under under the cover of midnight, then embarked on pre-prepared junks and disappeared in the canal networks and marches onto the Mekong Delta. As estimated that some 150 out of the total 25,000 prisoners escaped, most of the left-wing agitators. This cause has been nothing but oh, trouble, and Baudaz reform is the second step. After the administrative reform, Baudaz's cabinet has begun to further centralize power. The recent turmoil in Indochina offers them a good excuse. He implores us to grant him authority to set up an imperial police force. Baudaz and his ministers argue that only imperial police carrying orders from the imperial court in Hue can effectively pacify the disobedient peasants and restore order. No, no. Little help? Sure, why not? Oh, wow, they actually threw quite a few divisions over here now. This war is going to take even longer than I thought. Factory lease. Ben Den Commune Movement? Look at this. Factory lease. We discussed with the AOG to temporarily have some factories and concessions to be at the complete disposal of the Nanjing government to help them in their fight for survival. Give two military factories to the government, but, but they might refuse in a show of disobedience. Try it. Uh, the Ben Din province, the home of Tae Son Rebellion, is witnessing a dramatic escalation of peasant movement. Demonstrators initially demanded an end to corvée slavery, or corvée slavery, labor, an equivalent to serfdom, but when they were ignored by local administrators, angry peasants began to burn down administrative buildings, town halls, and railway stations, destroy tax registers, and pillage police stations. Local administrations have been paralyzed, and associations called communes have been formed, and the movement has begun to spread to other provinces in southern Annam and Mekong. Clearly, the Viet Minh are all behind all these other movements. Could you guys actually win here, or no? Saigon Uprising. Crap. Yesterday, concerned, concerted, concerted, insurgency. 
Uh, simultaneously broke out from Tonkin to Kokin, China. The trade unions went into general strike and tried to occupy municipal government buildings. While most places, order has been restored, the Viet Minh brought their peasant rebellion from Ben Din and Mekong to Saigon and the city. Local garrisons defected and rebels seized control of key communications and administrative facilities in Saigon. Oh, crap. Legation Council supposed to providing aid to Stage 1. If you remember that, please go ahead. And let's save just in case. And now we are in a little bit of a civil kerfuffle. Yay. You can go straight for Saigon. Oh, we were close. Can you declare independence? About a solution. Local, we call could try to fall into a Viet Men and guerrillas rising everywhere. Low Vendor China is in a state of emergency. Local elites and anti syndicalist nationalists have rallied behind the Emperor Bao Dai and proposed a solution. And we honor the Protective Treaty, which means granting Nguyen, or Nguyen Dynasty Greater Autonomy in Nam as well as Tonkin, will help pacify the rural regions, mobilize local resources, and defeat the rebels. Otherwise, the prevailing anti colonialist sentiment will give the Viet Minh an edge. Bao Dai's missive ends ominously, stating that if Germany doesn't respond to Vietnamese nationalism, every village will be a nest of resistance, each former collaborator and enemy, and your officials and colonists will see themselves seek to leave this atmosphere, and will choke, which will choke them. We need this help. Um, hmm. Mm, I don't know. I don't want Vietnam to be independent, to be honest with you. We need this help. Hmm. I still want to exist, though. I don't want Vietnam to exist. No. I don't want Vietnam. Rules of war. Vietnam doesn't respect the modern rules of war. The guerrilla fighters not only refuse to wear uniforms, they often do their best to blend in with the civilian population. It was impossible to tell a Viet Minh insurgent from a civilian population. Our generals have argued that the war against Viet Minh can only be total. If you everything that moves. They just try to differentiate, I guess. Yeah. Us, but these guys we get less attack for now. For how long? They get 40% more division defense of core territory. Are you kidding me? That's overpowered. That's brokenly overpowered. 40%? Jesus Christ! Why not just give them? Just get, let them win the war completely. Why even try to do a stupid war like this? If it's going to be 40%. Jesus. Vote passes, no one cares. I'm sorry, but Vietnam should not be independent. It just should not. And we have to, why do we have to deal with supply issues and they don't? Like, what the heck, man? Old and dumb. I'm gonna call this part of this campaign. Yes, that's good. Um, what else? Anything over there? Nope. Collaborate with local monopolizers. We can help do this one, but we're gonna do probably do this one. Play local garrisons. That's not bad. Uh, the best way to get ourselves out of black money slumps is to support the economy back home and revive our exports. The then we should support large German businesses and penetrate the region economically in order to gain access to cheap raw materials. No, I'd rather have you. I'd rather see you die. I honestly would rather see you die than anything else. This is ridiculous. 40% is way too overpowered. Way, 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 way too overpowered. Okay, then. But then, it does, then again, it does help when the AI is being real dumb. Actually, go here. Go there. Oof. Alright, so we lost a thousand. We got 25,000. Uh, Transmarine voting rights. No one cares. Mechanical computing. Don't get radar. Or radio, I mean. Not radar. Start a naval blockade. 
All right, so the interchange insurgency has deteriorated into full-blown war. However, the war against the Viet Minh's insurgents have no concrete front. Everywhere at the front line, every peasant wearing a rice hat could be a Viet Minh. Let's do whatever we can to secure victory in the right. Because of the right. Envoys of the International can enter the South China Sea freely and can send secret support of the interchange building. This can't continue. Shilling is Saigon. Might as well. Get really request with some manpower, too. This good lord is a bad. Broke passes, don't care. Oh, come on, we're so close. All right, hold them. You're going to have the manpower guns. Explore Zeppelin airships, huh? Form Fencer Pahir units. Remove Black Monday, getting Black Monday recovery, which does help out immediately, but after that, political garrisons, German advisory groups. Local Aduda File. Thorough. Not bad. Probably, probably use more political power. Well, King Sisavang might be one of the smaller autonomous independence. He's still influential. All right, uh, he has requested certain doc colonial rights be righted. Wrongs be righted. We shall do this to a certain extent. You need manpower right now, man. Please. The interview lose that towel is still okay. You want to force attack? We'll force defense. Guns. How many guns? We're completely out of guns. Zeppelin airships. Mm, war propaganda. Your single poor causeway. Alright. Actually, we, we should have planes here too, right? Yeah. Hmm. Reduce insurgency strength by 50. 10. Uh, good. Displays up in airplanes? Or airships. The development of naval aviation. The Zeppelin airships have been gradually replaced by more advanced maritime patrol planes and also easy in arsenal. The naval reconnaissance task. <clears throat> However, the recent war in Indochina has given birth to a daring idea. Using Zeppelin to patrol over the Indochina's peninsula, these airships could also deliver supplies to isolated garrisons with ant poor anti air firepower. The rebels, this should be a safe bet. Well, we could do that, or we just get some more guns. I'm going to get some more guns first. Our infantry equipment and stockpiles are becoming worryingly, worryingly sparse. In order to properly fulfill our duties to the Kaiser, we must request a shipment of guns to the uh, Reich's colonial lump. Come on, just kill them off. Local economic initiative. Or this one. Many local prisons have a common request. Expansion of the personal military forces. By allowing this on the condition that each race of German speaking regiment of elite or royal guards, we can benefit our regular persons while well fulfilling their demands. Form fan separate units. Well, it was man a lot of manpower, which is better to do now than later. Uh, the growing intense war in Indochina has exposed the weakness of our army. While well, infantry units are well equipped to defend their position against enemy, they are too cumbersome to fight aggressively and flexibly. It's vital that we can select elite soldiers from armed forces, combining the special skills of Gebergsjäger and Falschemjäger to form our own elite Fassbär unit to better conduct this kind of mission. Eh, why not? We'll try it. Why not? You got the town? It's fine with me. Just get off more divisions. That's all I care about. Seven. 
Wow. Let's go to Beijing. A few days ago, Hans Schroeder, a promising young diplomat in the Peking Commission, was arrested on trumped up charges of soliciting underage and illegal prostitutes. The Beijing government used this as a pretext to push back in several German supported reforms proposed by the Prosperity League, our lobbying group, and the National Assembly. Well, ultimately, a minor scandal, this still hits harder than we'd like to admit. Darn it. Underage prostitutes. Jesus. Return of Alexander von Hochhausen. After working in Nanjing for the regime of Qi Jian, Alexander von Hochhausen returned to his work with us. Excellent. What's on the Balkans of war this time? Let's hold the camper now. Hold, hold, hold. And they left the territory. Okay, then. I do keep raising up more and more divisions, man. God dang it. Better not lose here. Stand off in America. About to explode there. Really, that's all the manpower we get. Jesus. Not terrible. We got supplies. I could just get rid of it, maybe. You're actually... Now, we would need Kanto to really do this. Oh, the manpower. Screw it. Thanks, guys. Reinforced police units? Oh, well, I guess we can't do that now. There's something like no supply issues. Uh, everyone about that, please go ahead. Good that that's done. I'm very surprised we don't get any more supplies in Germany proper. Mm. Local and economic initiative. Rudolf Führer, our high-ranking employee of the Norddeutsche Lloyd, is approached with a comprehensive plan to sponsor local trade and shipping. It serves to support the economy of Southeast Asia in the long term by making it less dependent on exporting raw materials. Socialist Rebellion in the Philippines. With the end of the American colonial rule in the Philippines, the archipelago fell into chaos. A group of disgruntled army officers, along with the bands of peasants and industrial workers, have revolted over to the government and established a socialist regime. It remains to be seen that the Philippine military forces can be surprised by the rebels, but so some help will certainly increase their chance of winning. Not our business. This is dumb. The political power, resource efficiency gain goes down. Hmm. How are they beating us so easily? Man, what the heck? Liberation territories. Now that we finally get paying full control of Laos, we need to expand our civil service services to cover the newly annexed territories on the other side of the Making River. Oh, we need to get rid of these guys. Wow, that's fast. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, 
The amount of uh, defense I get is just ridiculous. New Admiralty? Um, hmm. Education reform. German advisory group? That'd be good. We're creating a permanent military attaché style. Our system for the local force, we can not only help smooth the process of integrating them into our arm army, but keep it on radical elements that might infiltrate them too. As well as what else? Ooh. Social mobilization would be bad. Progress manpower, 25,000 would be bad. But get 25,000 more from that or doing extensive conscription? Good question. Flat 25. Increase more coming. Let's go with extensive conscription. And then. New Admiralty. A reassessment of the role of the Admiralty has begun in the German East Asia, slowly developed into proper administration rather than a few territories. And then resume this. Eh, is that it? Was that really all we could do? No, we can do this. What the heck? We can do this again. That is so stupid. I don't like that part of the focus tree. And request arms from Berlin, of course. And then develop Qingdao. Qingdao is more than a city. It's a symbol of German dominance. Control more than anything else. It's a place in the sun. Through this Jingdao would be unthinkable to high command. All in all, offers must be made to fortify the concession. A new admiralty. Now, after reassessing the status of the admiralty, we've decided that the German East Asia is, above all, a branch of the Kaiserliche Marine. We'll focus on naval construction and lead the administration to the natives. Great! And we get docking output, a fleet backed by colonies. Well, that's cool. Um, we're doing a request modern artillery because I want to get as much equipment as possible. Our existing artillery pieces are rusted relics from even before the Valkyrie. To better protect our colonies, we should request modern pieces from Berlin, which is not bad. And we could even get more guns, which we could really use. And then we'll go down with this approach and just do a lot of this stuff. So, <clears throat> Chris, further so arm supplies. With tensions ramping up further within the region, we must bolster our standing forces even more. We should send a request to Berlin for further equipment. And they're slowly attacking us. Now, we did get this tile back, which is actually pretty darn good. But, as you can tell, supplies. No, boy, no, right now. They have so many divisions. Ah. Hold on. Wait, wait a second. Wait a moment. Hold on. Um. Probably use some military guys here. Spock token goes down, would probably be probably the best thing. Von Kessinger? Yes. That would hopefully help out reduce some of the attrition here. Don't let them move. Do not let them move. No matter what happens, do not let them move. And we got him. Nice. Keep them in place. Someone else, hold. Hold, hold, hold. Hold until your bananas fall off. Uh, Marines, you got to hold until you die, basically. You can actually go in there, too. Um, you're not allowed to die there. Do we have any more command? Oh, we do not. That's not good. Help him out. Help him out. Help him out. We cannot lose this or this one. Either one of these two. I oh, got some of that, too. We don't have really enough for armored cars or stuff like that. Uh, coordination, maybe? That'd be nice. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Break him here, break him here. That's good. Go in. Even if they take this towel, that which will still wouldn't be very good for us. Ooh, we'll request modern artillery. That was a two. We did go superior firepower just because, I don't know. I think that would be probably for the best, in all honesty. Keep them busy, keep them busy. Head down, head down. They attack that tile. I'm not too upset about that one. Go. We're slowly destroying them, which is awesome, 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 awesome. Move, 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 move. And then an orthodox approach. While this idea of recruiting the natives into the armed forces isn't a new concept, the idea of training them to be a little more than a garrison force is, although it appears several members of the officer corps is up to the challenge. While Santiago, Tete Festive. Oh, goodness. Shortly after the midnight, when Vietnamese people enjoy celebrating Lunar New Year and setting off firecrackers, grenades exploded in the German embassy in Hanoi. Viet Minh commandos appeared in Hanoi downtown while a huge size of Viet Minh. Troops launch massive attacks against every city and towns. Ignorant peasants led by VM agitators and armed with machetes and spears rose up in various districts to eliminate the tyrants. We're totally caught off guard. Is this all Viet Minh celebrate New Lunar New Year? Come on. Come on. For the love of God, come on. Baldbergas. Jesus Christ, come on. Force it. Force the defense. Force it, force it, force it, force it, force it. I don't care what happens. All right, that's good. All I care is that we destroy these divisions right here. That's the biggest thing we can do right now. Warp up again would be nice. Request more guns. Where are we at for guns? We're, not, we're doing better than we, we were earlier. I don't want to do that still, which I don't think would be very good for us. 
Guns or war propaganda? Well, we could definitely use more war propaganda, even though none of this is a cord stuff, so guns would probably be a safer bet. <laughs> At least for now. You want to take that towel? You know what? You can have it. Oh, we got him. Well, thank God we got him. They lost 120,000, which is insane to think about, but that's okay. Flood. Go through. Go, 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 go. We've almost got him. Keep him in place. Come on. Go through here and cut these guys off. Good. Cut them off from Saigon. Nice. Push for their arm supplies and an orthodox approach. Go to Kanto. Let's join the Rex back. That's good. That's good. After that one, reforming the garrison might be good as well, but hey, the Serbian Republic is gone, huh? Alright. Nice. Keep him in place still. We got him. Basically, we already got him. What are the other. Oh! Oh, I see. I see why we don't have him anymore. Come on, come on, come on. That's good. Jesus Christ, come on. How do, you, how do they keep flooding divisions in here? What the heck? They said Beach Initiative? The uprising in the have worsened. Um, key positions have fallen to Fiat men bandits and we're struggling to cope. The only chance rebels sent us an initiative of peace talks. Spot concerns us will be considered as humiliation. Why is Moonbot giving control of the region? Go kill yourself. Yeah, go kill yourself. We literally just won. There we go. That's what we like to see. Yeah, they sent his pizza delegation. Look at the guys. They're veterans now. How much brutal fighting that was. That's insane. Plus 60%. I get it. It's supposed to be like the Vietnam War, basically, and stuff like that. But still, victory in Indochina. Our glorious armies managed to throw out the Viet Minh revolt in Indochina. The glory day for Germany. So they're good, Kamaradin. That was not easy, man. That was not easy. Can I recommend that to anybody? Not really. That was something... I can't really recommend. Holy crap. That was not... not... It was fun, but it's... Kind of torturous, to be honest. Okay, a little torturous. But we're alive. And we're doing okay. German interchange reconciliation. Kill every single last one of them. Nineteen crisis. Eh, I think, I think we're okay. The flashback of the counterinsurgency actions in a China's haunting Admiral Helmut von Mukta, and now he found that he has to do something to reconcile his brutal killings. Really, really? He wants to pursue a path to colonial policy by granting greater local autonomy and promoting German into Chinese harmony. By doing so, he hopes to regain the hearts and minds of people in, Chi in Indo Chinese, in the Indo China region. Go kill every last one of them at this point. You might as well. I mean, with how much crap they gave us. Are you kidding me? No, yeah, can't even do anything about that anyways. Um, We could do that, but we could keep going to another route. Education reform. Literacy rate of the native population is presently, currently, described, best described as abysmal. By promoting education in German by bilingual locals, we can attempt to remedy some of the issues. The UNIs acquired the new tent equipment in production. With the advice of the Canadian tin expert in Helmut von Mukti's carte de blanche. <coughs> Yunnanese economic expert Miao Yuntai has authorized the purchase and importation of modern ore washing and smelting furnaces through the Kunming Haifeng Railway. While well, this is not alarming initially, German mining experts have suggested that the modern smelting machinery would remedy two of the key weaknesses we exploit in order to cut a profit from the Yunnanese and tin trade. The first one would be the tin purity. The new electric furnaces, if properly operated, could raise the purity of the Gaju tin to international standards and provide a uniformity of the content that is necessary for the direct international sales, which would allow them to bypass their economic consortia that work as a liaison between Yunnan and the international market. While we still earn large profits from the Yunnanese tin thanks to their over-reliance on our trade offices in Guazu. It may just be a matter of time before they realize this and escape our hold. Further escape our hold. We'll have to keep an eye on them, of course. Without mining? 50? Holy crap! Our prospectors have discovered rich bauxite deposits in the state of Johor. Perfect for uh, production of aluminum. Well, the initial cost of mining will be significant. Our projected tonnage is worth the expense. Okay, for 50? I can get along with 50. I'm okay with 50. Political actions? Oh, we could do that stuff, but still. Uh, where are we at right now? We're still building up some more cities. We're not doing too bad. Of course, until the Japanese attacks, and then we all die. Dispatch workers to the Borneo mines. 35 days for one focus, huh? Best in concessions. Resume cooperation. We could. Um, in the meantime, planes are actually looking okay. Get some of that first. 
uh, and then enrich initiatives. Sponsoring a pair of European-style universities in Singapore and Saigon with lots of broader research base, as well as allowing richer and more educated natives to study here rather than going abroad where they may become radicalized. That's from Middle Africa would not be bad. Doctors in Africa, ooh, some field hospitals would not be bad. Ooh, Ozin Economic Sphere. Give them guns. My reviews and views, I mean, they're kind of doing okay already. We don't really need to do that. Um, overall, not bad. Give these way more millies, though. Or actually, millies in general. An unorth unorthodox approach. Well, it's definitely more mapper than we had before. More strength. Um, anything there? Not really. Japan. Ooh. Seizing their place among the great powers once again. Unlikely to see this news warmly, which is concerning. Quite concerning. Um, local guards, not bad. A backyard fleet backed by colonies, an unorthodox approach. Yeah. Not bad. Could be a little better though, but not bad. Get some more coordination. I like coordination. Coordination helps out. It really does. What are we missing here? Everything. Naval bombers? I guess that makes sense. Naval bombies. How are our ships doing? Training two, we're all out of fuel. Cool. Anything else here? Free trade. I mean, honestly, with what the bonuses we get already is not bad. Just trade one. Actually, don't do that one. There you go. Education reform. Not bad. And they'll get getting some more army XP as well because we'll need a lot of defense and stuff like that. So after this one, authorized local arms production. Not bad. Military factors. Two military factors for seventy days is pretty bad. I'll be honest. That's actually pretty worth doing. But, and I want those civvies, but I'll keep going on this. I should go this way and see what happens. Form NCOs would not be bad. Form East Asian Ger here form. German East Asia here form. That's not bad. More reconnaissance would be good too. No more defense. But they do the Grand Fleet. The ost Azim Flotte is the largest of granites outside of Europe and forms the core of our operations in the East. Far East. A shining testament to our commitment to the present order. Our primary foe within the region is, of course, the Empire of Japan and our own considerable fleet. Given a uh, Grand Fleet in port faces the Japanese. To use significant naval assets to keep it on watch. And the the Ost Asian fleet in the 1934 naval plan. For East Asia, perhaps more than anyone else, depends upon German naval power to project or scatter islands and bases. Therefore, while the majority of the Fatherland's resources are devoted to extremely prestigious Hoxie Flota, the 1934 naval plan makes significant provisions for Navy's expansion. The trends into Chinese railway, with <clears throat> our last series of investments. And uh, new rolling stock, we've managed to finish connecting routes to Tonkin. This should help improve our internal trade and travel. Tonkin Gulf Steel Factories. The difficulties of the construction of infrastructure have highlighted our lack of the steel industry. The open thatch, uh, okay, iron mine has long been an ambition of our industrial planners, combined with the development of coal mines in North Vietnam. We can style, now start a pan Tonkin steel production project. And then Ost Azin uh, infrastructural plan. So it gets an economic sphere, uh, national spirit, which would be great. By formulating a comprehensive plan for local railroads, as well as a new highway network between cities, we can overhaul the local infrastructure and improve our otherwise lacking transport links. Which would be great, even though we're trying to get more millies now and more civvies at the same time. So, 15 and 11, not too bad. But, oh, wow. Total effective manpower, 40%. Not bad. Of course, we're on extensive conscription and unorthodox approach, but we're doing quite a bit better on millies, which is awesome, 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 awesome to see, so... Oh, what's going on in Detroit? I'm just worried about the war with Japan. It's going to be really... Oh my gosh. This is disgusting. Everyone hates the Reds. Oh, these guys are still fighting each other too. But whatever. Reds are not looking too bad though. Whether, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, actually. Kingdom of Spain is not too, too bad either. Hopefully they win. Well, actually, maybe we like call Spain. I don't know. Um, Yeah, Russia's Reds. It, Russian Socialist Republic led by Karadik, which I've seen before. He's got a lot of hair. Is he Jewish? Oh no, yeah, he was. So Jewish Litvak family. We could get rid of free trade, but the benefits to it are just. I don't see a point in doing that. Fortify factories is not bad. Like, it's pretty darn decent. We can make some more sport equipment too. Some armored trains, some better artillery, some motorized. We're feeling pretty good right now. Is Bulgaria still fighting Greece and Romania as Serbia is 
An afterthought. Nice. Also, I didn't realize that these guys over here are part of the Cobra Spirit Sphere. It's going to be a big problem. We've got a massive border. Uh, basically, a massive border issue. We have garrisons on different areas in here and stuff like that, but. The Marines guarding as well, I think. It was a massive border issue. And we also have this guy for. A a uh, and for air experience, of course we have this guy for organization and supply consumption. I did grab this just but factors a little bit faster. Material designer. I like sock stack. That's pretty good. Let's grab some naval stuff maybe. Capital ship stuff. Sort efficiency is not bad. Convoy rating. Don't mind that. But since we're using a lot of capital ships, we'll just do that one for now. Get more fuel maybe. Nice, very good. Nice, good. And we'll, I'll be fine on steel, hopefully, eventually. Um, down here after this. Uh, ooh, syndicates are gone. Well, our form of the garrisons wouldn't be bad. We need that extra attack and defense. Um, flying Corps, aviation. Uh, it's not bad, but we'll probably go with aviation school. Well, German doctrine holds that the naval aviation's only purpose is in reconnaissance. The Grand Admiral's afforded a surprising degree of freedom over the disposition of his forces. To that end, if so chooses, we can begin investing much more time into the school of thought that holds air power to be the future of the air naval power. Though it will surely attract controversy in Berlin. The divisions that we were making are these divisions, which have recon. I put, did put recon on, on them. Now, engineers, we might put field hospitals just because it would make it more uh, um, game meta-like. So... Because we do get a bonus to one of these here, as we saw earlier. Oh, Serbia's back. Oh, Valkyries of the Battlefield. So, more, even more trickle back would be not be bad, even though we got plenty of manpower now. But we're only on extensive. Where is that, Serbia? Wait, Serbia's dead. Very weird, but whatever. Oh, there goes Romanian's pocket. Goodbye. And then, of course, carrier conversion too. A new battlecruiser under construction will be converted to a flat top ship. Take some time. Oh, crap. Okay. Austrian Empire. Are they red or are they blue? They're red. Or I guess really pink. For middle of Europe, oh god, I hope Germany does okay. For the love of god, they better do okay. Engineers, sure, just in case. Better guns, that'd be nice. Oh wait, do we get oh. We already got the like, extra steel. There you go. Not bad. Not bad at all. And once we have enough, of course we are trying to get some carrier. Well, I guess technically why are we making these carrier planes if we don't have any carriers? Yeah, it makes sense. Why do we? Oh, I guess we do have carriers. That's my bad. For some reason I thought we didn't. Well, this is not very well balanced, is it? There you go. There you go. All right. Carry conversion. Or we could do light cruisers. Let's do some first. We take some bribery and arouse some controversy when Berlin learns, but to support doctrinal divergence, we should have some battle cruisers converted into flat top carriers in short order. And another division, that's good. It's only two though, which is not very good, but whatever. Uh, got some of our vets right there. Um, we were gained oh, one of these divisions had light tanks. Oh crap. Okay, it's only coming to France. Uh, that was this division with actually armored recon's not bad. German proposes a single currency. But uh, whatever. In a lot of the consequences of Black Monday, the German government has come up with a new proposal to rejuvenate the continental economy. In order to meaningfully, meaningfully increase and simplify commerce and trade across the Reichsbank, they proposed that the German currency, the mark, should become the accepted currency in all of Middle Europa, renamed formally to the Europa mark. This proposal is modeled somewhat after the Zollverein agreements between German states in the 19th century, which, among other things, established a standardized system of currency exchange pegged to the Prussian mark. Although its reach and ambition are far greater. As a subject nation, we're forced to accept these terms without any say. Kind of sin. Not bad. Could be a lot worse. 
Uh, so after that one, carry conversion, uh, we'll probably expand naval facilities. A present of current naval facilities in Simbalwag, Wang, and Kamran can only support the cost of patrols elements to in the area. We should expand these naval bases so they can better handle large capital ships and support a growing presence. Reform the garrisons. New amendments made. The most able men will be formed in what will be the nucleus of a new German East Asian here. Also, it appears that more panzers have been secured by more vo voiceless officers of these reforms, local NCOs. German isn't spoken by all of our locals, though it has been slowly replacing English and even French. Those found able to speak German are highly sought after and are usually fast tracked into becoming non commissioned officers. Plus, it pays better, and the German East Asian here formed. Through determination, what was uh, a local garrison force has been reformed into a truly modern army. I think it was just one, two. And then, yeah, I definitely want to get some of this stuff. Uh, Coast Fortification Program. Currently, Singapore appears to be vulnerable to amphibious landings. With Japanese expanding their Marine Force, we should expand our defenses and match and counter them. But I think we'll end that episode there. I got a lot of command power got up on But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Well, we're probably going to end up dying. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.